Hello everybody and welcome back to Gardens and Crystals with me Wesley Peterson and today I am going to be planting my meadowsweet bushes or Spirea cross sinensis Greshheim bushes behind the rest of the bushes I have going on in this border behind me here. So at the moment you can see I have this nine bark bush, a yellow variety, growing and flushing out all over and doing a wonderful job and looking fantastic. I need to go in and prune that back a little so there's space at the bottom to plant in my new bushes. Also we've had a lot of rain lately so you can see my hydrangea arborescence Annabelle has flopped over and is hanging to the side there with all its heavy wonderful big white flowers it's had on it during the summer season but I'm not going to be touching that bush because I want to keep those flower heads on the bush as winter interest and they aren't in the way of where I'm going to be planting in my lovely meadow sweets so that's okay so I will just prune back the nine bark but on the other side I just want you to see down here on the side I have a grouping of plants that are called Canadian golden rod which are an invasive species here in Sweden that have grown out here and they get very long. They can get taller than me, so they can get to about two meters tall or so. And then they flop because they get very heavy when the flowers come out. And also, again, because of the rain, we've had so much rain lately, they have flopped over and are laying on top of my Spirea japonica bushes, my lovely smaller, pink flowering meadow sweets so i need to get those out completely but they are a wonderful plant so those i will be taking out completely and discarding i have them in one border where i will let them stay for a while but i've removed them from two areas of my garden because they spread very quickly but they're not too difficult to get up because the roots are quite close to the surface of the soil um, and they come up as a clump but they are plants that kind of spread out with rhizomes and of course with lots of seeds at the same time. To stop that plant, if you want to keep it in your garden from flopping over, you need to go in and give it a Chelsea chop in the summertime. And I will show you another bunch of this that I pruned back to half the size because they still flower out, they still grow up, but half wasn't enough. Now these are still standing up at the moment because the flowers are taking a little bit longer to come out. I will show you in a moment. Um, but I had another bush I did the same thing with. The flowers came out, it grew up quite a lot again and flopped over. So I would suggest if you want to keep it so that the flowers come up and stay nice, you need to chop it down to two thirds of the height that it comes out. It will still flush out flowers for you and still look beautiful but you need to keep this plant under control if you have it in an area where it's an invasive species because it really does spread out quite quickly. I just want to bring some of the flowers in to show you closer up because they are actually very beautiful. But to do that, I just need to go back over there, get my wheelbarrow with all my equipment and my lovely meadow sweet plants that I'm going to be planting into this area here. So here I have these wonderful flowers from the Canadian goldenrod. And you can see they come out on separate spikes here off the main stem and they look feather-like and all of the little flowers splay out to the sides. This plant is absolutely wonderful for the insects. Now it's the end of August and going into September the insects will still be able to get the nutrients they need to survive and get ready for the winter time. So it is a wonderful plant for that. So if you have somewhere where you can keep a safe amount, fine, but really make sure that this plant doesn't get out of hand for you, but it is wonderful. So I'm going to go in and remove this one, but before I do that, I'll just show you the one that I Chelsea chopped back to half so you can see how it's still standing up nice and straight and tall and how wonderful that looks. So here we go, as I said, you can see this beautiful Canadian golden rod in front of this large boulder here and I know it doesn't look like it but I did prune this down to half and it has actually grown out near enough as tall as the other ones you saw that have flopped over a little bit less and a little bit stronger in the stems because it's standing up straight as you can see and you can see here the insects absolutely love this plant and the flowers are beautiful but being an invasive species this grouping I did not plant here at all they were actually growing behind the boulder and I removed all of those 
and it had creeped up under the boulder in front and grown out itself. And as you can see, these ones that have flopped here on the floor, this is what they'd be like if they were allowed to just keep growing up. They get too top heavy, especially if they're in a rich soil and if they're not getting direct sunlight all day long, they will leg out and they will become weak and flop over. And these are in a soil that is too rich for them. So they've grown up too fast and too limp. And at the same time, you can see some of the other bushes I have going on in here that I will be working with and creating this symbiosis and combination of lovely different plants with different foliage and so forth together. It really will be wonderful and easy to just go in and prune back now and again and keep a nice shape. So I hope you enjoyed that closer look of the Canadian goldenrod. Now I need to go in and start pruning back my beautiful nine bark bush behind me here. So snip, 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 and all this will be done in what seems like just a few seconds. <laughs> So you might think it was a bit brutal to just go in and chop, chop, chop a lot of the stems off this beautiful plant here, but no, it's not. I've done this many times with this bush and it just performs very well by being pruned back like this. Every stem that you prune back, it will produce two new stems and it will race out with a lot of new growth the next season. I have to go in and prune back this bush at least two times in the summer season, hard back, and I go back and snip with my secretaires a few bits here and there as well. And that also goes for the red variety, the Diabolo. They grow very fast and perform so well in your garden. And that's why they're perfect like this. You can let them grow out as a tall bush. This plant will get to around one and a half, two meters tall. So it's getting up to its maximum height and I really want it to get to its maximum height to give us coverage. We have a table on the other side of here and I want to leave the top and let that keep pushing out. So I've pruned back the tops of the stems and they've produced already this season two or three new branches on them. So they're doing exactly what I want. But at the back here, I need space to plant in my new plants. And I'm going to have to come in and shear those back every single year a lot to give the meadow sweets that are growing up around the back here space to grow out as well. And they can also get to one and a half meters tall. So they will fill out this and cascade with white flowers on the back side of this border. The nine bark also get lovely white flowers during the summer. So during July, August, they've had lots of flowers on them and the insects love those too. And then as you can see, the hydrangeas as well. So there's a lot of different plants with different foliage, but they all have white flowers on them. Apart from in a moment, you will see my Viraea japonica plants that have a lovely light pink color to them. So before I carry on, I just want to show you also that this plant is very, very easy to propagate. So every part I've chopped off, you can put into pots with soil and propagate them. They only take a maximum of two weeks and they will already have some roots on them. And you will have plants that you will be able to plant out later in the season, next season. And you don't even have to do that. You could put those stems directly in the ground and they will flush out for you. I've done that so many places around my garden now. So let me just show you that. So here I have four stems. They are a little bit soft, but they're hardening off. And you can still use those. You can use the hardwood or the softwood. It will still work. What you do is you take off, just like slide your fingers along, take off all the bottom leaves on the stem. And you can leave the top little part like that, one leaf, two leaf, or a couple, that's enough. So you can go in and do that with all the stems. Just slide down, take all the bottom leaves off, all the way up to the top two. So that's the second one done. And then I have another one here. Take those off and then I'll just do my last one to show you here. Slide down all of those. These are easy to slide off, you see. And then these are a little bit too long, so I want to go in and prune them to the size I want so they'll fit my pot. I have a pot that's around this size and I want about that much sticking out of the top so I can see where I need to prune back. Get your secateurs and Prune back so that you do it just under where a set of leaves were. That is a node area. And this will have at least one, two, three, 
four node areas under the soil. So as long as you have at least two, you will have areas for where the roots will grow out on your cutting here. And then that part will go into the soil, the rest will grow out, take one more leaf off here, maybe two. Normally, if your plant is soft at the top, you will prune off the top and leave a couple of side leaves here. I've done it this way now, for now. So again, another one that's very tall here. So I will go and prune in just under leaf set like that. And I'll do the same with this one here, like that. And the last one, or did I do that? No, I didn't do that one. I'll take that one to there. So now, these are my cuttings. You can half the size of the leaves so that the plant doesn't transpire too much and use a lot of energy sending up liquid to these leaves so that the cuttings use their energy on producing roots for you as quickly as possible. So now we've got four here. Get your pot filled with soil. I've got a gardening soil here mixed with fine sand um, around 50-50. Get a stick of any type and make a hole so that you don't break the stem of your cutting as you're going to put it into the soil. Put your cutting on the edge of the pot in the hole, just like that. There you go. And then push the soil in around it. So that's the first one in. Now we do number two. Stick in, push down, make a hole, get your cutting, put it into the hole. There you go, as far down as possible. That gives the plant many more chances of producing roots for you. Backside, one more hole. One more cutting. Oh, not two, one. <laughs> In with that, soil around. Last one, and then I can get this stick out of my way. <laughs> there we go. In with that. So, so there we go, as easy as that. Now, I just need to water this through, this soil, so that it stays nice and moist. Don't leave it so that it's soaking, soaking wet anywhere, because the stems need to be able to breathe to be able to produce the roots, but don't let it dry out either, because the thin new roots that come out will just dry up and your cutting will die. So, that is very simple. You could put more in a pot, because once they start growing out, you will split them up anyway but they need to be on the edge of the pot because that makes the baby roots come out, start spreading out even more. So they branch off even more if they're on the edge of the pot, if they have some kind of resistance. If you put them in the bottom, then you'll have a root that will grow down and it might not spread out as much and it's more difficult for the cutting to take off. But as I said, these are very, very easy and simple plants to make cuttings from. You can get these and just stick them straight down in the ground. And as it's rained so much at the moment, I know if I put these straight into the soil, they will just take off and grow. And I have examples of that. I have my um, Diablo, the dark red leaved or purple leaved um, variety that I've just stuck in the ground there and actually in a border next to me here. And they have just taken off no problem. So when I pruned back this bush last time a lot, I took all of the stems and I planted them along the edge of my garden area outside of crystal woods and I'm hoping they're all going to take off and create a huge long bush for me together with the uh, meadow sweets that I have growing out there so there's going to be a mixture of a bush it will be lovely so right now I am finally ready to get the plant of the day into the border this beautiful spirea cross scenaria gressheim beautiful beautiful meadow sweet plant and these are going to well this is already getting quite tall so this shows you how they're going to grow out at the back. Now, the sun comes up from this side, the east goes round south. So south is this side. So the sun is going to be penetrating down into the garden here all day long, down to the west. And even though it's behind the other bushes, this will be able to grow up so that it will also be able to get the rays of the sun in the areas where I want this plant to be able to produce all its lovely white flowers cascading down the back here. So I'm going to go into fast forward and get these into the ground. So before I carry on here, I just want to show you this nine bark. This is the Diablo uh, variety, the dark red variety that, as I said, I just put the stems into the ground and let them propagate themselves. And look at all the roots. Isn't that amazing? They've only been in the ground there a couple of weeks and they flushed out all these roots. I'm going to keep these on the side for a minute because I want to plant them in where I have the Canadian golden rod growing at the moment. So they'll flush out there next to the yellow variety and give me a beautiful contrast. Now, I really have to show you this stem 
<laughs> that I planted into the ground to show you that even though I just showed you this method of pruning back the leaves and being careful and getting two nodes, putting them in the pot with soil and so forth, it's not always necessary if they're outside in a moist soil because look at this. I planted this plant as a whole stem, left all the side branches on and I left all the leaves on it and some of the original leaves may have fell off, I'm not sure, probably did, and it's flushed out new leaves. Now these look like the original leaves, but look at the amount of roots this stem has produced. Look at the size of this one. And this whole ball is roots at the bottom of this stem, and the stem comes out at the bottom here. So it had that amount, so probably, yeah, a couple of nodes under the soil, the rest above. Look at the size of this cutting and all the stems. And you would think that would not be able to survive because this cutting's having to produce a lot of energy to fill out all the leaves, to fill out all the branches and so forth. But this shows you how much this plant is a survivor and can produce a huge root ball like this in this state. Perfect for me now to plant where the Canadian gold rod is going to come out and this will bush out into a big bush next year. I am so amazed and happy about that. Oh, I am just loving getting all this sorted out at last. It just feels so good. <laughs> so look at this. This is the whole root ball of the Canadian goldenrod that I've taken out. It was very easy to get up because it was young and fresh. The soil is so moist, I could easily get it out in one clump and all the rest is gone. So if I want to put this in a corner somewhere and let it grow out, then I could and it will look beautiful. But as I said, invasive species, I already have a grouping of it. I don't need any more because it does spread easily. So it's gonna go. Now the soil in this border is perfect right now. It's fresh, it's easy and loose so I could turn it. There is a lot of organic material that has fallen into the border now. The leaves are pruned back off the bush. I've had old logs on the top that have rotted down and become a lovely kind of mulch for the border. That is brilliant. So I don't have to worry about amending the soil and all this, it's fine. There hasn't really been anything growing down there anyway. So I'm just going to put my meadow sweets in there and let them do their thing. They're not too fussy and I know they're going to be fine. But when the leaves start falling in my garden, I will give this a lovely layer of leaves that have fallen to the ground and they will keep the soil isolated for the winter and the frost and so forth and also give nutrients into the soil as the plants grow. So all I have to do now is get them planted. But first I'm just going to place them out so I can see exactly how I want them to be because I have four bushes so I'll be able to see how far apart I need to spread them in this area. Now look at that already. That was the absolute perfect amount of this plant that I needed to get planted. <laughs> this is just so quick and easy right now with the ground being so moist and the soil being so easy to work with. This is not taking any time at all. My plants are in and they will take no time to get in and settle and spread their roots out because it's going to rain for days and days and days now and the soil is going to stay moist for quite some time so I know they're going to be fine. What I need to go in and do now is prune back the lower branches on my larix tree, my larch, which is growing up there. I'm very happy about that. I planted that large tree in there only a couple of years ago and it's grown at least a meter or more per year, every year. Um, and it is huge already. I want that to be a big, tall, cascading, lovely tree. It reminds me of evergreen trees like uh, spruce trees and fir trees and such things. But this is a deciduous tree, so it loses all its leaves during the winter. But I really like that so that we'll get light coming through um, into our cottage windows still. So I just need to prune back the lower branches because I'm going to be planting in the Diablo cuttings that I took out so that they grow out on the side there to give that lovely dark color coming up next to the limey green color next year. It's gonna be gorgeous. So these are the branches that I pruned back off my larch tree. And actually when I got in there, I didn't realize there were so many branches growing all along the stem right down to the bottom, hiding in amongst all that bushwork. And yet they're still bright green, healthy and happy. So the plant has 
not had any problem keeping these alive in the shady part of the bush but now they're all gone because I want that tree to grow out tall and I want it to concentrate on producing a lovely canopy. So I've pruned back around halfway now. So I've done a hard prune. So everything that was in the bush is gone. Now I just have the beautiful trunk that will grow up there. So now these branches won't be protruding out of the bush and growing further and further out so that I have to go in and prune them back anyway. And when my nine bark bush starts growing in there, it's going to be difficult for me to get in there behind and then get these out. So I had to do it now. So now I am ready to go in and plant my Diablo nine bark in that side. I have a few more in another little border right next to me here. So I'm going to take all of those and clump them in there so I get a lovely big bush of this. A couple more long cuttings I put in the ground that have produced lots of roots where I just stuck them in the ground without taking any leaves off or any branches and they've just, they've just survived. I just can't show you enough how happy I am that these stems that I just put in the ground have grown out. Look at all these roots. And there are even lovely worms in there to boot. <laughs> so that's all the planting done. Now I just want to do a little tidy up around the edge here of all these loose leaves. And then I'll take you in so you can have a closer look of how everything is looking for now before it all starts filling out beautifully like the rest of it next season. So I am finished with all the planting in this border, the tidying up, the pruning back and so forth, the removing of plants that I don't want. And I am so happy that next year this will all fill out and I won't have to see a patch of soil at the bottom, at the back of my border. I'll know that it will all fill in together grow to the one and one and a half meters tall, have flowers on the back and the front side of the border, different shaped foliage, different colors, different varieties of plants, all sorts going on. And it's so enjoyable to see and the process too. So I'm gonna go behind the camera now and take you in for a closer look so you can see everything and how it all is and the plants that are there. And you have to use your imagination, remember, to think how it's going to be in the future. So let's go in for that closer look. So this is the final result and I am so pleased about this and I can already see in my mind how these wonderful meadow sweets will bush out and mound out, filling together and all the brown soil will disappear as this bush comes up and that I have selected lots of different plants here that are very easy to prune. They all grow very fast and they all react well with pruning and you will still get lovely flowers all over. Every single plant flowers actually as I said with white to pink flowers here as you can see these beautiful pink flowers down here and it's just going to fill this area up and make it look half wild. The effect that I always say that I'm going for half kept half wild mix and match kind of looking like things are just growing up together somehow and then look at this pop of red in here this is really going to break up those greens and limey green colors and the red stem of the red dogwood and everything else going on here to give some beautiful contrast and also the different shapes of the leaves are really really nice to look at and you can see that it's possible to get around the whole of this border apart from the left hand, no, the right hand side, I should say, where the hydrangea has grown out and flopped over into my little pathway I had made to go through, but I've decided to let this all just grow out and bush out because I'm really liking the effect of it as it is. So let your fantasy run loose and experiment with different plants and different things. And you know, you can always go in and switch it up. I mean, you can let it grow very, very wild, tall and bush out all over, or you can keep it tight and you can get a hedge trimmer and keep a straighter edge or however you want. Look how much debris I got out of that little area at that time. And then look at this wonderful, meadow sweet in this border behind here this lovely darker pink color just 
beautiful and I have planted so many different cultivars of these meadow sweets in my garden because they do so well. They can cope with drought periods, they can cope with rainy periods, they can cope with bright direct sun, they can cope with shade during some hours of the day and they fill out just so wonderfully everywhere and they have so many different colored flowers and forms and shapes and the deer don't eat them and I just think they are perfect for what I want here. So look at this border, I'm so pleased with this. So I really hope you enjoyed seeing my border closer up and my little project for the day and well, hope you get out there and do a little something with some green plants yourself. So all I have to say now is thank you very much once again for watching Gardens and Crystals with me, Wesley Peterson. Please remember to like, subscribe and hit the bell so you know when my next video will be coming up and I will see you again very, very soon. Goodbye. Thank you.